Yeah, where we at? We're starting a new game. Yeah, how about that? During the Raylib Next Game Jam, I made Daisy Trains, a 2D train puzzle game, and decided to expand that idea into a full game in 2025. I had made a 3D prototype using Raylib and C, and was looking forward to turning it into a real project. For the first stream of the year, I had a blank slate and some big ideas. I even started looking into writing the graphics engine myself. Now that I'm looking at it, do I want to do all this stuff myself? Episode 7254, able to render a cube on the screen. I have thought about Bevy and Rust, uh, but I don't want to learn Rust. I think I'm a C language family person. I don't know, I, I, I like C. If you like C, you'll love C++ eventually. If you like C, you're gonna hate C++. I feel like people are actually coming to watch me make a game, slowly realizing I don't know how to make a game. Have I considered uploading the final video without the trippy effects? You don't like the trippy effects? Too trippy? Due to the uh, realization that I'm streaming this and because I'm also terrified, I'm gonna start with Raylib and C. I want it to be fun. I want the process, fun process. Raylib is very, very fun. Can you do a stream in a top hat and a monocle? Well, I was gonna save it till stream two, but all right. Daisy trains 3D. Boom, thanks. We're, we're away. Are we building? We did it. Raylib.h. Okay, that worked. One thing to be said for Raylib. Took us like five seconds to open a window. Some might say that's not realistic. GCC, why are you using MSVC? <laughs> yeah, because I don't know anything else. Because I like the debugger. Imagine I'm a poor, I'm a poor refugee that came from Unity and slowly fell down. All right, we're, we're in. New project setup, that was, didn't actually take that long. Is it a good setup? Things that we won't even worry about right now. I decided to split the engine systems out into a module called Genie. Phenomenal cosmic power. Genie in that platform, and then it calls in it window. <laughs> Look, I had a dream, and the dream may turn out to be a nightmare, but we're gonna do it. I've got 3,943 public watch hours of 4,000, and once that goes, ads. Buy my course, Masterclass on C programming. Masterclass. I guess the Grid 3D might be a good place to start. Yes! And in the next 4,690 days, We'll be building something that looks like it's 20 years old, which is a pretty sweet spot really for games. First thing is getting your game loop going. Don't worry about engine stuff that will shake out as you build out the game. Yeah, true. I'm gonna do a little bit of framework. I was trying to maintain some kind of structure to the project without getting too caught up in systems and losing sight of the game itself. At this stage, I was porting work from the 3D prototype, which was very rough. Okay, we can uh, place and remove blocks. It feels good, man, it feels good. I, you know, I try to keep these streams honest, close to reality as possible, no hype. Um, but you know, we're making Minecraft. Minecraft, Minecraft, Minecraft. Two. 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 <laughs> Thank you. It is Minecraft 2. It is Minecraft 2. I hope it's worth it, because this is going to take a while, and it would suck to build all the scaffolding and the systems only to realise the game's not great. But I, I think it's got potential. And if it doesn't, we'll just put guns and spaceships and stuff and then have it as a war game, and then we're like, Lo I love war games with trains. Train wars. So we've got our level editor back and better than ever. Actually, I hate to say it, but the best way to do things is to do them more than one time. <laughs> level ed. Tour. The 3D prototype only had one level, so before continuing I wanted to expand the grid systems to support multiple levels in the world. This process uncovered a lot of issues in the way the grid was set up, so I spent a little time getting everything aligned before moving on. Cool! Zip! Wow look at that! Oh, I get so excited over the smallest things! Wow, that's pretty cool. Then we can make a level up here, and then we can make a level here. Now we can cycle through the levels. Dog, levels, dog. 
We've got multi-leveled multi-levels. <laughs> it's actually just fun to build things. Blocks are fun no matter what. We're gonna save the world tomorrow. Nice. While working on the prototype, I had learned a bit about writing data to binary files. So I just rebuilt the simple load save for the grid data. Do do do. Boom, world loaded. <laughs> wow. We've got our chocolate slice. This is not the look of the game. This is just for our debugging. After saving the world, I could now start building the rail connection grid, which would be a bit more of a challenge as it is a diamond layout. But first, no project is complete without the trusty side quest. Back in 2024, I had started my low-level game dev journey with the Odin programming language. The reason, uh, reasons I stopped with Odin was, uh, reason number one, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I was a noob. Number two was no debugger. There's a, there's a plugin for IntelliJ for JetBrains, an Odin plugin. So now there's an Odin a proper debugger. I looked at JetBrains, it's like, you gotta pay for JetBrains. So I just asked them, can I have some JetBrains please? And they said, yes, you can have a license. And I was like, sweet. While the project is like reasonably small, I was like, why don't I just port some of it into Odin and just as a test off stream, IDE is idea, idea. Is that why it's called idea? It's got the same world building thing. Right now it just makes a bunch of random terrain objects just for testing. It's kind of just like C, except it's got a few things. Oh yeah, take all this with a grain of salt because I'm kind of still a noob. There's something about C and, it, and all of its oldness and weirdness that you kind of get used to. Yeah, I, I don't know is the answer. It feels like there's got to be some catch. You use it the same way as C, but you just get more stuff. The catch is that I start doing things like putting brackets on the same line. I've gone back to C. I've gone back to C, but um, it was a, it was just an experiment. Saying why Odin's so great. It's got all this cool stuff in it. All of this stuff is true, but I forgot that there was a third and all important thing: resources. I was just like, oh, I just want to write out the world, the grid data to a file. Like, how do you write a file? How do you write a file? I don't know. The other thing is when you ask the Oracle, when you ask the Copilot. Hey, how do I uh, do a thing in Odin? It gives you stuff that's like not even real code. I guess the difference, I say, say C write file. Basically you get lots of stuff. I O create open a file, a million things. And if you go Odin write file, first of all, it's just like, okay, it doesn't even know what Odin is. So Odin language write file and you get the overview. And the overview doesn't really have anything on it. And I don't know, I just went round and round in circles. I'm definitely not the greatest programmer. So yeah, I think it just, it, it suits someone who's actually pretty good at programming, you know, or has a lot of experience. The, the comments on the video so far are like, don't get too caught up in the systems. Make sure you actually make a game. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> who's getting caught up in systems? Rebuilding the rail coordinate system turned out to be a challenge, especially on stream. So it's nice to squish that into a time-lapse and skip to the end result. Yes, <laughs> buddy boy, anything's possible with debug information. Oh yeah, it auto calculates the rail grid. Um, and also I got a new mode. Oh, I can do <laughs> it certainly beats clicking the mouse 500 times. When you're in rail mode, you can build rail. And, and the whole way it works is way better now because anyone outside of its neighbor radius is not valid. So each of them know what their neighbors are. So it's not 100% bulletproof, but it's way better. This all seems much more exciting in your own head. There it is, there's the rail piece, just like we expected. Oh baby. While Raylib provides a basic 3D setup with OpenGL, there is no shading or lighting model. So in the meantime, I experimented with some baked material shading in Blender. Pre-shaded rail pieces. Why would you need Unreal Engine when you can just pre-shade everything? <laughs> Daisy Trains, who ever thought you'd come this far? All aboard! The plan of action, well I put on the stream that it was going to be trains, uh, train engine. Electric city train. 
Yeah, look at this little guy. <laughs> yeah, look at it go. What a absolute beauty. Yeah, train life. We don't currently we don't currently have a scaling mechanism. Ah, oh, train, a train, a trainy train. Oh, a train. The train is on. The train is on the move, accelerating even. Just <laughs> I feel like we've started so many times, but eventually we'll get past the start and we will be in the middle. Is it? Will it? Is it? Will it? <laughs> nice. <laughs> we got ping pong train. Why is it a ghost train? Train going, train continuing, train continuing. <laughs> so I've done this so many times now, and every time it's just as exciting. <laughs> the train's moving on the track. <laughs> no. If you've seen the last episode of DevQuest, you might recognize this process of trying to get the trains to move along the tracks. I managed to recreate almost every bug and even create some brand new ones. <laughs> wow. All right, it's a little off. Oh yeah, link cell coordinate. Okay. Don't let Copilot run away without ya. I'm doing this as if it's gonna work with the full confidence that the math is correct. Yep, buddy. Oh, that's much better. Whoa, did it do something crazy there? <laughs> Track directions were not quite working. But now you see there's another, a new paradigm. So when there's more than one option, there is a priority and you can switch it by switching what it is. So now the tracks, the track determination of the train of what way to go and everything is much more simple. We had almost caught up to the prototype. We just had to add the train cars. I would say we're not setting the history Oh, or maybe we are. Whoa, look at it go. Whoa, what did I do? <laughs> There's always something crazy going on. We're using the force more than anything else. Oh, buddy boy. <laughs> oh, no, it's still broken. Come on, no bugs. Yes. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> wow, that just kind of worked. Straight off the bat. <laughs> Whoa, did you? <laughs> that was awesome. What, what's going on there? So, wow. Do your little slopey uppy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, did it right that way? Oh, I remember this bug where it goes on its side. <laughs> the dancing trains are back. Oh, that looks good. 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 By the end of January, Daisy Trains had caught up to the prototype and taken its first step beyond by supporting multiple trains. But this time we had a more robust project structure with the editor, game, and genie engine modules. In the next devlog, we'll be working on larger worlds, terrain generation ideas, and the core game mechanics and I'll be streaming the process here on YouTube when possible. If you'd like to support the project, I've created a Patreon where you can get access to the source code of Daisy Trains and there will be playtesting throughout development once the game is a bit further along.